Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and this is going to be part two of The Ranch Update, two of two. Uh, so if you missed the previous video, it was update marked part one of two, and that was the majority of my indoor trees and plants. Uh, so now I wanted to get to the bonsais that are out on my uh, back deck here and walk you down to the tree farm and show you the update on the white spruce trees, over 500 that I planted this past spring. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, y'all. So starting over here, I've got my weeping Italian fig and getting some nice figs on it. Not sure. A lot of the ones uh, indoors had figs, but they were inedible. So I don't know if this one I'll be able to eat or not, but I gave the thing a really hard pruning in the spring and, um, took out pretty much all growth that wasn't weeping out of the pot. So that has really come back nice and strong. I've got a little Japanese fantail willow. So my white pine Japanese garden tree size uh, did not make it. I basically uh, fried them this winter in the basement greenhouse. So that's on me. Uh, I've got the Jim Dandy winter berry. If you saw in a previous video, I showed you the berries were coming in. They were a light, light white greenish to a pink hue and just as promised they have really brightened up bright red love that so that's going to be a really cool uh, trunk when i actually get to prune it up i'll do that next spring i just left it this year because i wanted to see the red berries so it looks like that's going to do it for my tomato plants i have one over here and then probably 18 or so against the garage and we had a, a really bad cold snap last week and I think that just did them all in. So there's another little fig tree down there. They're looking nice, some sweet birches. My hemlock, this was one of my few Yamadoris. This thing, I've had a couple years and just now this, uh, this past summer, it started to kick off some new foliage. I just thought the thing was dead in a pot, but uh, luckily it's not. Down here, I think this is a scotch pine. I gotta get in there and weed that. My little weeping Japanese. You see them both, boom, boom. Those are my weeping willows. Those three little pots right there from Let's Do Bonsai, Scott Winard. He has a great channel. If you haven't checked him out, check him out. So this is, oh, it's flowering again. So this kicks off bright yellow flowers, this lantana. It's actually a vine. Um, I've been pruning it up as a bonsai and obviously it came back very strong. It almost looks like a bush again. So I'll probably let, I'll let all of these things grow until spring and then we'll be repotting and pruning them up. We have my forest planting of black locust. Now, pretty much all of these are from seed. So it takes a while, but it is well worth it when you have grown it from seed, you watch the whole process and I just love not only the control of it, but just, you know, it feels good to have created something that um, most people either Yamadori or just buy from the store. So here we have some Colorado blue spruce, some Connecticut red pine, and then some Thuja occidentalis. And that's going to be a really tight, tightly grown um, forest with the intention to mimic the dense uh, evergreen forest of Connecticut. These I'm really excited about. These are Japanese black pines and they really have gotten some nice thickness on them this year. I have never pruned them. Uh, and there's a planting of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. And in the spring, I am going to give them their first pruning. Loving them. They have really aggressive, nice hardy needles. The white pines are a lot softer. These Japanese black pines are crazy have some uh, sequoias. This, I think I had a tea tree olive in there. That died, but this tree, I'm thinking it's some sort of a birch or maybe an ash, came up out of nowhere in this little strawberry pot. And it's really thickened up nice this year. Pretty cool. Little maple, I had, this was a white spire birch and I think it just died, but 
a little red maple popped in its place. So I'm going to let that grow up. I've been getting these little like succulent things that have been popping up in my bonsais and I'm totally cool with that. Like uh, over here, this one is a little bit more established. It kicked off some flowers. It's got a nice look to it. So yeah, it's growing back hardy right there. I could probably prune that this stuff back and it'll grow in nice and thick. But. All right, so we've got some white pine, scotch, scott pine, and scotch pine actually, and some red pines in here. Kentucky yellow wood. Now, this coastal redwood has done amazing. It's a planting of three. If you see, look how thick that trunk is getting. Boom, boom. And these were grown December 2018. Yeah, December 2018. So we're looking at going on two years of these, almost two years old. Trident maple. There's another sweet birch. Boom, boom. This is my Western red bud. I see a lot of Eastern red buds here. Uh, not so many Western, so pretty unique to this area. And as you see with Clip and Grow, you could really achieve some cool uh, trunk sway. I do not wire, I refuse to. Here is a little red maple. And that's getting a nice little trunk on it itself. It looks pretty fugly right now, but the next time I prune it, it'll be, it'll come back very nice. Some Rose of Sharon. Now these kick off purple flowers, I know, because these are all Rose of Sharon. There's purples, pinks, whites, um, and they like to volunteer and grow themselves in pots, which is cool to me. This is sequoia planting from seed from when Laura and I went out to San Francisco, the, uh, the Murr Woods National Forest. That was cool. We've got a few of these golden cypress here. Japanese alcovas, their leaves are starting to turn, which out of nowhere, if you could see, the leaves on all of our trees have started to turn reds and orange and yellows. Very pretty. This is a Pinus aristata from the Planter's Choice um, grow kit, bonsai starter grow kit. And this is one of the first ones. So this was February, 2018, along with, you know, my Delonics and blue jacaranas and such, and some Colorado blue spruce, more Zelkova. Actually, this Zelkova isn't changing color at all. It's leaves are staying bright green. So that's interesting. Same species, one's green, one's not. Some Kentucky yellow woods. You see the older leaves are browning up and falling off, but we have some nice new growth. Now this guy, this is a Yamadori white pine and the roots over rock are finally starting to come in. They were really uh, lopsided on one side of the rock, but there it is uh, established well in the pot now. It took its first pruning and it looks like it came back nice and healthy. Now the way I positioned it in the pot was a total rookie mistake. So when I, when I repot it, I will turn it, put it more towards this side so that it comes across the pot rather than just growing out of it. Got a little Japanese maple. I took a hard pruning this year. It doesn't look that great right now, but lots of progress on the trunk and uh, branching coming out. Some more Kentucky yellow woods. That's a tea tree olive, letting it fill in and then I'll probably prune that back in September. <laughs> or excuse me, in the spring, not September. It is September. More Zelkova. Coastal redwood. Figs, trident maple. More fig. This is a Pinus strobus, which is a weeping white pine. I got a pine cone from a really cool tree in the neighborhood. 
and got a couple of them to develop. It's Alcova. It's my Thuja. This one got its first uh, pruning this season. I left that sacrificial branch there just to th thicken up the base. Probably take that out in spring. Here is my river birch with Thuja occidentalis bushes. That's why I'm growing them. So I started to do the landscape and this is going to be where the path is. Got the moss in there, some nice local quartz rocks and sandstone. And yeah, they're looking good. Some some branches died back. I'm not sure if they are gonna come back or not, but we shall see. Black locust. This is a Kentucky yellow wood, a red maple, and a crepe myrtle. So those are kind of fun growing together. Unique planting of three. Another black locust. You see those came back really strong. And this is the second of two of the Pinus aristatas from the original Planter's Choice grow kit. Have not pruned them at all. Some nice branching. Very slow growers. Very slow. You know, we're looking at year three on these. And unpruned, that's as big as they get. All right. Making our way out. Oh, and get over here. So this is my blueberry. <laughs> Millie, what are you doing under there, baby? Hi. <laughs> Good girl. This is my blueberry bonsai. And a red maple decided to hop in there and volunteer, so I let it grow. So those are starting to change color. Another trident maple. This is the tree that was growing up underneath my front steps when I moved in here. And that's how it got that gnarly trunk down there. And it had just one tiny little branch with a couple of leaves. And it's been pruned a few times now. And it's really starting to branch out nicely. So that'll be more like a topiary style. I've got my weeping juniper here. Had a little bit of dieback transitioning from uh, indoors to outdoors. But I'm glad I finally got it outdoors. Um, you know, it is a nice hardy tree. I just had left it inside because I was a rookie. Lemon, lemon laced elderberry. And it has like a split trunk. I'd really just let it grow in so it could thicken up this year. So that'll be fun to get into. Another Thuja. I pruned those later in the season. Some people were not pleased with my choice to do that, but I have so many trees, it's hard to do everything in its exact right timing. So this is the other uh, white pine that was the size of a Japanese garden tree that died off, but I did have a couple of other trees pop up in there and letting them grow up. It's either a birch or an ash or a hickory, something like that. They're all indigenous here. And you know, as trees mature, the leaves actually, um, they change a little bit, so your guess is as good as mine. I'm not gonna do the, the plant app, plant snap app thing, so don't even recommend it. This is another Jim Dandy winterberry, but even though it's recovered, I let it get too dry this season, and so that one did not develop berries. All right, making our way out. So, I have lots of these trident maples. I had gotten them from Bonsai Dan a while ago. I think eBay. There's like 25 of them bare rooted. 75 bucks. Totally worth it. Totally. They're, they're not that attractive right now, but um, I really have high hopes for them. Got this nice scotch pine, or maybe this is a Japanese. Yeah, this is a Japanese black pine. So that one's branching out nicely. Still have never pruned that one. This is Italian wisteria. This is a European maple and I believe a birch, all from Europe. Those popped up from seeds that I brought back from our uh, trip to Florence, Paris, and Germany last year. We got some white pines down here. These have been in these pots basically since I germinated them as seeds from seed and a couple of volunteer trees down here as well. More and more down here. Probably like 30 or so. All right. 
making our way down. There's the tomato plants. Some still look like they, they're healthy, but I don't know if I'll get the tomatoes to actually uh, redden up or if they'll just stay green. So this, my front steps, I just put some hydrangea, some nice flowering uh, plants. There's a Rosa Sharon, some more hydrangea up there. Uh, not bonsai, but you know, it's nice to have pops of color. This is the multi-trunk thuja that I pruned up in a video a couple of weeks ago. So that one, I was very pleasantly surprised at the base and how it's developed because I had basically just let it grow as a bush prior to, so. All right, end of paddleboard season. I'll have to put those in the basement, but nothing like trying to carry, you know, 12 foot long boards when you have a broken hand. So I got raspberries and blackberries up there. The raspberries did all right, blackberries not so much. Blueberry bushes. One out of three kicked off nice blueberries for me. The rest were lazy slugs. Got a couple of apple trees I've been developing. I got them from a nursery a few years ago. And I don't know, this one's looking all right. I didn't really prune them this year. I let the fruit grow. And then out of nowhere, this guy, he just started to look rough. And I have a crab apple up front that, that additionally did not do well this year. So I'm wondering if the extreme hot summer had something to do with it and they'll recover or not. I hope they do. But I'll keep you posted on that. So that's one type of apple tree and this is another type. I know that the deer helped themselves to all the fruit on them. <laughs> one day they were there, the next day they weren't. Okay. So the overflow from the tree farm, um, I planted 500 down there, 10 rows of 50. The overflow I put up here in this raised uh, tree bed. So you see they're nice, dark green, looking really healthy. Um, hopefully we'll get some thickness to the trunk in this fall season. Had it's lots of nice new growth. You see that lighter green? That's what it looks like when it kicks off some new growth. Some nice new growth this year uh, from spring until now. Only lost a few, which is really cool. And it's interesting because the ones up here are this dark green. And they're basically planted in leaves and grass cuttings underneath. And then some topsoil up, up above. So I'm thinking that they are actually continuously composting and, um, and feeding the trees. And that's why they're that dark color. We've got a couple of oaks that popped up as well. Boom, boom. These are all little oak trees. Maybe a uh, walnut in there, something like that. My chicken's egg production has slowed a little bit. We were getting, from a six pack of chickens, uh, hens, we were getting between, between four and five a day, and now it's more like two or three, which is still pretty good. When there's less sunlight, they tend to lay a little less. So here's some hemlocks. Don't look like they're gonna make it. It was a landscaping job and the lady just wanted them all out of there. So I said, well, if I could get any to survive, I've been paid to remove them. So they're free. So if any survive, that would be cool. And it looks like these white pines have. Looks like they're gonna make it. All right. These are our vegetable gardens that basically we grew for the bunnies this year. I I did not do the best job at uh, bunny prevention and the little babies could fit th through this chicken wire. So Laura and I have a plan to have a plan to really do a good job with them uh, next year. Okay, so now same species, Picea glauca, white spruce. And these are the ones in the tree farm. You see how they're brighter yellow? Now they're not like unhealthy and dry or anything like that. It's just totally different colors. And nature won the battle, by the way. I did cardboard and a ton of mulch, bark mulch, to keep the weeds down. And it did not work. <laughs> so you see, they're planted all the way down. That's goldenrod, which, you know, it's good for the bees and such. Um, hummingbirds and things of that nature. It's one of the later flowering uh, plants of the season. So once it came up, I just said, you know what, in, in the fall and winter, I'll take care of it. I'll lay more mulch, more cardboard, and see if we can do, it, uh, do a better job for next year. 
but I know where they're all planted. They're all in a line. They are buried underneath mulch, but actually planted into sandbags. Okay, so that helps keep the weeds out from these. Um, I didn't want to plant them in the ground. And um, it also really helps retain the moisture. We went a couple of weeks without rain and I came down to uh, check them and there was, there was still moist in there, which is great. So you see there's a big disparity in the different sizes. This is one of the more dominant ones. Really grew it nice this year. These came all bare rooted from Michigan. Um, I paid 30 cents a tree for four inches to eight inches and the majority were well taller than eight inches when they came. I'd say more along the lines of uh, 10 to 24 inches for the majority. So 30 cents a tree really, really made me happy. Totally got the good value out of that. So I know to, probably to you, it looks like a mess, but it's organized chaos right now. And I'm pleased with um, how the sandbags have worked for weed barrier and how they have worked for moisture retention. So, you know, someone had said, oh, you're gonna lose a third of those trees, but that hasn't been the case. I've had a lot more success than that. Maybe out of 531 that I planted, maybe 25 didn't make it. This is my Japanese garden and it's in uh, development. So we've got these weeping Norwegian spruce, really getting some nice trunks. This is another one of those white pines that I got from uh, that landscaping job. Another weeping Norwegian spruce, love these. Really filled in nicely this year. Laura and I did a good hard prune on them. I just uh, chopped this the other day. This is a weeping cherry um, that I got from a friend for doing a favor. And I don't know, half of it, the top was just dead and I know they weren't the healthiest looking when we got them. It's like they got one and I got one. So I don't know. I get a very nice chop. It's in my Japanese tree garden anyways. That's where I like to keep the trees is between, you know, two and maybe five feet tall. So nice lavender. Here is the third of three, these weeping Norwegians. And I got these a couple of years ago, uh, right where my daughter's ballet school was. and they were at the back of this nursery and they were only $40 a pop. And now I've seen these at higher end nurseries for three to $400. So that's why I got all three of them. Looks like we have some, uh, some branches dying here. We call this one Bob Marley because it's just got like Marley hair vibe, it's really cool. A little blue spruce I'm letting grow out because I was pruning it to be a weeping one as well, but it fought me every step of the way and it does not want to weep. So I'm letting it fill back in because it was getting pretty ugly. And we'll take a look at that one again in spring. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Part one, indoor trees. Part two, outdoor bonsai, tree garden, raised tree bed, and Japanese garden. I think I covered it all. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, please hit that subscribe and notification bell. And there'll be much more to come from the ranch. Cheers.